back at my favorite tire shop, Ocean Isle Auto Repair. Uh, my teammate and his family runs the shop, so uh, they hooked me up on Kendo's and stuff. But um, anyway, I'm not here because I'm checking out Stacy's car. I've had a few people ask for a video overview of his Drift S12. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to put it up on the lift and let you guys check it out. He just got it off the trailer. Perfect timing. Well, hello there. My name is Devin. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Doctored Garage. This is where I post videos of all the cars I'm working on, the drift events I go to, and me driving my old red A86. I recently started to help with the drift events here at the Myrtle Beach Drift Series. Make sure to check them out, Myrtle Beach Drift Series, as well as my drift team, Unsung Legends, on all the social media. Thanks! This is an S12 hatchback. He drove it with a single cam KA for a while. When that finally let go, he put this in. This is a dual cam KA with a big old turbo, excessive manufacturing intake. Um, it's got a built bottom end stock head. And like a bunch of S13 parts, you can make them fit on an S12. So like the Mishimoto radiator, this is from an S13. Uh, when we get on the left, we'll go over the suspension and stuff. But, we'll take a look at the inside. So he's got some NRG seats. You can see where the shifter lines up there with the KA transmission. It really lines up pretty good. It's not perfect. You know, it doesn't fit in the stock hole, but it goes right there. And let's see if you can see his ECU in there. He's got a Mega Squirt MS3X. Yeah. It's also got a fuel cell. We'll look at it when it's up on the lift. Probably can't see it through the window there, but he's got a fuel cell, kind of a, a semi tubular end here, and he likes to tap walls and stuff, so that's why there's like nothing back here. <laughs> and he went a little too ham <laughs> over the weekend. He's tapped the spoiler a few times. This is the first time he's actually like damaged it like this. Let's go put it up on the lift. So I've had a few people ask me when they see that, you know, Stacy drifts an S12, and they ask, well, why don't, why don't we see more S12s? Like, they don't seem like they'd be that rare of a car. Why don't we see them? Well, one, well, they actually are kind of a rare car, or they just get stuck in the woods somewhere and people forget about it. But the other reason why we don't see a whole lot of drift S12s is because of this rear suspension design. So it's actually really hard to dial in the rear alignment on these cars. Well, what's leaking on me? Oh, there's water coming out of the car. <laughs> so the, the rear suspension on these really doesn't have much adjustment and it's a trailing arm setup. So under compression, you get some weird camber and toe going on. And there's a couple of companies that make like weld on adjustable pieces for these, um, but they're not exactly cheap for what you get. So stacy has been driving with this suspension for a while and, and he's got it pretty well dialed in. Um, there's a few things that you can do. Like, is this the hole that you slotted out or is it which one is it? Let's see here. I believe. So you, you can see this one's adjustable, right? You've got a. I believe it was the outside, yeah. Yeah, so you slot this one, <clears throat> and then this one has some adjustment. You can see it's got a little lobe on it and some little guides on it. So it has some adjustment, but just not a whole lot to get it dialed in. And then when you lower the car, like when you lower it, it really causes some weird suspension geometry stuff. So he has two other S12s right he's got one that's gonna be a street car and then the other one is gonna be the next drift car which we'll walk out and take a look at that in a minute we're gonna we're gonna put an s13 subframe in it so then we don't have to deal with any of this and we can get readily available stuff for it there's there's that fuel cell and like tube ren that he's got in this we're gonna i'm also trying to talk him into building some more so that way this stuff doesn't smash in so much but <laughs> okay what else do people ask about oh right you need to go to the front because that's what really people want to see. <sighs> Angle stuffs. Okay, so S13 coilover is pretty much bolt onto this, right? It's yep. just, uh, does the top hat have to change or is it the same? Nope, same. So the coilover is bolt on. You've got to change the knuckles and control arms because the stock control arms on this are pretty similar to an A86. Uh, so you swap over to this stuff. So we've got an S13 knuckle, S13 coilover, S13 
control arm and this one we extended an inch and and um it doesn't look pretty but we we notched it so that way it's got room for the outer tie rod end and he's got the gk tech outer tie rod ends with roll center adjusters we notched it so we can get all kinds of angle and then this is the part another thing that you have to do so this is an s14 tension rod right s13 tension rod oh. s14 bracket okay so s13 tension rod s14 bracket and then what you end up having to do is you got to redrill these holes right because normally it's it was this one here oh you see it? where i had to slot it oh yeah there we go okay that's cool that's good to show all right so if you're looking to put angle and other adjustable front suspension parts on your s12 that's what you need to do you get the s14 um tension rod bracket and you can see that hole right here that was slotted so that way he could bolt it up and that's all you had to do is that one yep and then up here it bolted on just fine yep that's amazing that's all you got to do sweet so all s13 stuff here s14 bracket and look the the radiator um fits pretty close too i mean s13 radiator so those don't fit yeah. exactly perfect well that and i don't know if the same width yeah, um change a little bit so that's why it doesn't fit perfect because the width here changes a little bit on the s12 chassis brings everything in a little bit because a little narrower but that's really not too bad at all. Did you leave the key in it where we can turn the wheel and show all the angles? Oh yeah, you can turn it with that. Oh sweet, oh that's right, you don't have like a normal. I keep thinking this is like a normal car, but there's <laughs> a lot of stuff that's that's not normal on it. Like it doesn't have like the stock um, ignition on it, but you can see he's got some decent amount of lock for just having some, some chopped knuckles and slightly extended control arms. That's where the, that's the limiter right here. That's where this hits. So we could grind that out and make some more angle on it. That's neat. That's what mine does too, by the way. He's got a lot with the lead wheel, not as much with the trailing wheel, which that was just my knuckle design, but <laughs> I can fix that in, in, in round two of these knuckles. We've got another set to make for him. Oh, the other thing that you have to do so with how much steering angle he has, like if you turn it too far, the uh, the tie rod ends up, like the outer tie rod, outer tie rod end ends up in front of the steering rack. And so to fix that, you can use these, which are like offset rack spacers, or you can, you know, relocate the, the steering rack forward on the subframe, um, which this is an S12 subframe, still an S12 steering rack. We didn't want to mess with that. This was cheaper and easier just to get some of those versus buying a new rack and subframe and all that stuff but that works pretty good considering considering we just built all this stuff in, in my garage and in here in your shop so yeah. okay so for the rear coilovers on an s12 are you using shocks and springs for s12 or what are you i'm using the springs from the s12 that i cut down okay and this is just the s13 coilover i took apart and just ran the but the, the top hat on these, or the, the upper mount on these is specific to the S12 because it's got that weird, like, tall bloop thing on top of it, right? No, it's just got, well, I use the the bushings from the factory shock. Oh, okay. On this. Okay. Yeah. So stock cut springs with S13 rear shocks. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not too bad. They make S12, it's like, like BC Racing makes specific S12 suspension for these or full coilovers, but it's a lot of money. And this car, Stacy's built on a, on a pretty tight budget, which is really surprising how well he does in competition here with having such a budget built car. I mean, some stuff isn't quite budget, like, you know, his, uh, his built engine, all kinds of stuff, you know, but a lot of the stuff he built as much himself in the, you know, in his shop um, without buying it so that way it saved the money and it's it's done really well honestly so that car is stacy's first drift car his first you know start at building a drift car uh so now he's decided to pick up a bunch of other s12s like i said and uh we're gonna build another one with everything that he's learned and then some some of my experience so this is this is gonna be the next drift car it's a coupe so it matches my coupe a86 since we're on the same drift team we should have the same sort of style of car maybe yeah this is the one that's going to get the s13 rear subframe as well as i think the s13 front subframe yeah sweet look at that it's all ready to put another engine in maybe pull the 
turbo K from the other car, maybe a different engine. Stitch welded. Plugged up some of the holes there. Yeah. The interior is pulled. I see. He's still got to do some stitch welding in here. But he started stripping it out and everything. Sound deadening's pulled. Working on pulling the seam sealer. But yeah, now this is ready for a cage and everything. One of the coolest things about the S12 and building a cage is that you don't have like a dash bar that gets in the way. You've got this that comes down. So it makes it really easy for building a cage because I don't have to pull all that stuff out. Just pull the clutch pedal and then you got enough room to do the uh, a rocker box over there. That's what I did on his blue car. We did the cage on that. But yeah. All right. Where's the street car at? Oh, over there. His girlfriend, well now fiance, bought this for him for his birthday, right? Or it was it Christmas? Christmas? Christmas. It was the funniest thing because Stacy was trying to buy it from this guy and <laughs> Victoria sent the guy a message was like, hey, let me buy it. Tell Stacy you sold it or you trashed or whatever. And the guy said, oh yeah, I took it to the junkyard. And Stacy was pissed. It was so funny. He sent me a text. He said, <laughs> Victoria sent me a video recording of him ranting about how upset he was. This guy took this good car to the junkyard, but Victoria bought it. And, uh, you know, so he's, he's working on getting this thing, uh, up and going to be a street car. It was running at one point. Um, but now what, the fuel pump's going out or something. He did a lot of work on it over a real short period of time, and then he's had other things on his mind. <laughs> but yeah, here we go. He's he's collecting S12s. He's just as bad as me with 8.6s, because I have three 8.6s, and now he's got three S12s. Oh yeah, we can take a look at the stock engine in this thing. Maybe. There we go. Where's the... Oh, there it is. Yeah. Mm. What is this engine? It's a CA20. It's a CA20, single cam of fury. <laughs> and it runs pretty good when it's running. And yeah, like I said, it just hasn't had time to go back through it again. Neat, neat, neat. So our drift team is called Unsung Legends because our cars don't quite get the credit that we think they deserve. And also us as drivers, but really it's about the cars. And S12 for sure is, is a unsung legend, man. They don't get the uh, the respect and, and um, the respect they deserve in the, in the S chassis community. A lot of people forget about them. But they're really good cars. And honestly, they're really, really similar to an A86. Like they came with solid axle as well as in independent rear suspension. So the solid axle, honestly, like it reminds me of an 86 so much because the axle design really isn't that different. The front suspension design is almost exactly like an A86. It's they're almost like honestly like they're the same underpinnings and and nissan just slapped their body on it and and badged a nissan and they really are so similar in and steering suspension design it really blows my mind stacy also came from jeeps before he started drifting so that's his sweet crawler jeep that he's been trying to sell for a while so he can fund more drift projects <laughs> <laughs> i walked past this earlier but this is a, a caged s13 that um, his dad picked up to build as a drift car and as you can see it's just uh it's been collecting parts <laughs> <laughs> and parts that don't really belong to it. like that's a miata bumper <laughs> yeah, it's, Miata. it's sitting here at some point at some point larry will build it i don't know when that point is but at <laughs> some point he'll get around to it and and larry's a good old mopar guy so he's been thinking about putting a mopar engine in it which That'd be fine. I just think he just needs to hurry up and do it so he can get out of the track. And is that the, that's the S13 subframe, right? That we're, yeah, there we go. He's got some adjustable arms on it already. Perfect. Oh, so it's missing that, that arm, but he's got this arm, adjustable arms, big old sway bar. Yeah, but it needs bushings, which is okay because if we walk over here, There's another S13 subframe. And this one has one arm, adjustable lower arm, but it's got solid diff bushings that he's just gotta get pulled out of that to put in the other one. 
Yeah. If you want to see more pictures and videos of Stacy's car, make sure to check them out on Instagram at Blue Bomber 200 SX and our team pages on Facebook and Instagram at Unsung Legends. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and share.